Welcome. In today's lesson, we'll be discussing the why of programming by reviewing mnemonics and having discussions that relate to the following topics. The first one is going to be Python lists. We're going to define what a list type is, then talk about some of the properties that lists have. Next, we'll talk about matrices. We'll talk about how to create a matrix, how we define what a matrix is, and how matrices are related to lists. Then we'll talk about tuples, what they are, how they're related to lists, and what it means for a tuple to be considered immutable. And then we'll talk about the type set, how we define what the set type is in Python. And finally, we'll talk about dictionaries, one of the most powerful Python constructs, a type that has a key and a value pair that makes it very useful for a number of use cases. And related to that, we'll talk about a hash table, how Python dictionaries use hash tables, and what a hash function is, what a hash table is, and how that all relates to Python dictionaries up now in this Y lesson. So our first mnemonic today is going to be a mother duck leading all of her ducklings in a nice sequential line. And the reason I chose this to represent the topic of a list is because a list will keep its items in a linear order, like this mother duck is going to keep all of her little ducklings in a nice order. They don't get rearranged. Okay, so what is a list in programming? Well, lists are a Python programming construct. They're a type that we can work with. And they work like a list in real life, one that you would write down where things can be above or below, like a task list, for example, is a good way to imagine it. And each one of those items is like a little pocket, a little container. So we can refer to this as an array. And lists are written with a square bracket on the outside. So that's the way you can tell it programmatically. And you'll see that there is a comma separating each of what we'd call those pockets, making it an array. Now lists keep their order, which is opposed to collections, sets, and dictionaries, which we're going to talk about in a minute. But when they're in an order, they stay in an order, which is useful for some use cases and not what we need for others. So when you think lists, think a sequence of elements. Our next mnemonic is going to be Morpheus from the Matrix. Do we live in the Matrix? I don't know. But Morpheus is our mnemonic for what a matrix or a matrices is going to be programmatically in Python. And that's because he's just so well known for the matrix role with the like blue pill or red pill thing. I thought it'd be an easy one to remember. So what's a matrix? Well, a matrix, when you think about it on a basic level, is just a nested list. It's a list inside of a list. And it's almost always made of numbers when we're dealing with a matrix. It doesn't have to be. Definitely any Python type can be entries inside of lists that are inside of lists. But when they're done with numbers, it's kind of something you can easily remember from high school because it would be a matrix that you could put up on a whiteboard. And if you add a list inside of a list inside of a list, you can make a two, three, four, five dimensional matrices, whatever you need. Our next mnemonic is going to be two clown statues that are both playing tubas. And that is going to represent the topic of a tuple. And the reason I chose this for the mnemonic is because these clowns are stuck in one position, so they're immutable. And also, tuples kind of lock things together. And I think of the two being like inseparable, these two clowns. So what is a tuple programmatically? Well, they're immutable lists that do keep their order. So just like a list, very similar, except instead of using the square brackets, you're going to see that they're done with parentheses. And you can think of them as locked, unchangeable, sturdy, immutable, meaning that they won't get out of place. Our next mnemonic is going to be a pool table rack, you know, one of the triangles that you put around the pool balls, and it's going to represent the topic of a set. And the reason I chose this is because they act like a container around items, but the items can be in any order. So if we think of a list that keeps everything in a nice sequence, like those ducks and the ducklings, well, this is going to be something where we have a triangle with a whole bunch of balls inside of it, but those integers, if that happens to be what's inside of our set, can be in any order. They don't need to be kept in the same exact line. Now, another interesting thing to remember about the set data type is that there can't be any duplicates. So if you add the number 3, the integer 3, over and over and over again to a set, when you print that set back out or you use it later, there's only going to be one 3 in there. It can't have duplicates. So when you think about the set data type, remember, no order, no duplicates, and it is changeable. 
So our second to last mnemonic is a very powerful Python type called a dictionary. And for the mnemonic, I chose a dictionary. I know I didn't want to get creative with this one, but it makes sense. It actually has a great metaphor because a dictionary will pair a word with its definition. And a dictionary in Python, a programmatic dictionary, is going to have two parts, a key and a value. And that can be the word and the definition. So it's a good way to remember it. So when we start working with them in the next video, you'll notice that a dictionary always has a curly brace around it, and it always uses commas to separate the index. But the one thing that's really different about them is that there's a colon between the key and the value. So in real life in the dictionary, it would be like the word that you looked up, colon, and then the definition, and then comma, and then the next one, which would be a key value pair again. And the whole thing would be inside these curly braces. Now, the values that a dictionary holds on both the key and the value can be of any type. And this actually goes for everything from lists to tuples to sets. Um, they can be strings or numbers or anything else that we want. They can even be sets inside of sets. And our last thing for dictionaries is that they don't keep an order, which is similar to a set. But one thing about the key value pairs that you might be wondering is how are they always knowing how to be next to each other, especially if it's all kept unordered in the background. And that will lead us to our last mnemonic, a hash brown, like one of those you would get with a good hearty, you know, breakfast with eggs and bacon and all of that stuff. And it represents the topic of a hash table and a hash function. We're going to talk about a few concepts that we haven't covered, so just roll with it. If it works for you, great. If not, skip it. But Dictionaries keep things in order when you try to pair a key and a value, but they keep all their items out of order. And one thing that's happening behind the scenes, which is really interesting to understand, is that there's an algorithm, a function. We haven't talked about this yet, but it means that no matter what thing we put into this function, we're going to get out the same value. So if you start thinking about how to store items on a list, you don't need everything in order. In fact, the way I kind of imagine this is if you've ever seen an Amazon warehouse where they store millions and millions of items that everybody orders, they're not kept in order. It's not alphabetical. It's a crazy array of a bunch of weird stuff. And if you are looking up like the Game of Thrones DVD, and you say, Amazon, where is this on the shelves? It's always going to point you to the same place on the same shelf, but that shelf isn't necessarily in alphabetical order. And we can always change the algorithm so that the hash function, which gives us our hash table, the equivalent of everything up on the walls, can be optimized. So maybe at first it's optimized for uh, like expensive things or up front so they don't get broken as much. But then you change the algorithm inside the hash function, and now your hash table organizes maybe things by items that are most ordered, most frequently ordered, or something like that. So dictionaries have a hash function and a hash table that keep their order and it's something that's optimized for python but it's something to keep in mind because you can always make your own or if you're building your own databases in the future all right so we're almost done with this video great hanging in there to recap we started with a mother duck leading her ducklings which represented a list we learned that lists are a python programming construct that work just like a list of items in real life they are an array they are sequential they are created with brackets, square brackets around them. So you'll see them in the code in our next video. Then our next mnemonic was Morpheus and he represented the topic of a matrix. And a matrix is really just a nested list, a list inside of a list. And it's almost always made with numbers, however it doesn't have to be, but that's the way to think about it back to your high school linear algebra stuff in a two or three dimensional structure. Then we imagined a pair of statue clowns with tubas to represent the topic of a tuple. We talked about how they're immutable, how they do keep their order, just like a list. Then we learned about a billiards rack, and then we learned how that represents the topic of a set. And sets are similar to lists, but they're unordered, and they don't have duplicate entries. And then we learned the mnemonic of a dictionary to represent the topic of a dictionary, the Python construct. And we learned how they have two parts, a key and a value, and how those pairs are always stuck together. But they can also have many stuck together pairs separated by commas, like our lists and our sets. We learned the dictionaries use the curly brackets around them instead of the braces like lists. And finally, we talked about a mnemonic for hash tables, which is the hash brown and how that's a clever way to store items out of order, but keep their key value pairs connected. So stay tuned for the next lessons and we'll look at some of these concepts in action. See you soon. 
Subscribe to the Mnemonic Academy YouTube channel for daily uploads that will help you learn amazing concepts through effortless associations.